Uh, we're turning tonight to our Bibles, and we're turning to the Old Testament, and we're turning to the book of Job, please. The Old Testament, book of Job. If you come with me, please, to Job chapter number 15. The book of Job, chapter number 15. And when you come to the book of Job, chapter 15, come down with me, please, to verse number 12. Job, chapter 15, and down to verse number 12. And it's here where we'll commence our Scripture reading. Why doth thine heart carry thee away? And what do thine eyes wink at? that thou turnest thy spirit against God, and lettest such words go out of thy mouth. What is man that he should be clean, and he which is born of a woman, that he should be righteous? Behold, he putteth no trust in his saints. Yea, the heavens are not clean in his sight. How much more abominable and filthy is man which drinketh iniquity like water? I will show thee. Hear me, and that which I have seen I will declare, which wise men have told from their fathers, and have not hid it. And unto whom alone the earth was given, and no stranger passed among them. The wicked man travaileth with pain all his days, and the number of years is hidden to the oppressor. A dreadful sound is in his ears. In prosperity the destroyer shall come upon him. He believeth not that he shall return out of darkness, and he is waited for of the sword. He wandereth abroad for bread, saying, Where is it? He knoweth that the day of darkness is ready at his hand. Trouble and anguish shall make him afraid. They shall prevail against him as a king ready to battle. For he stretcheth out his hand against God and stretcheth himself against the Almighty. And we know that God will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. There's one thing tonight, one thing. No man will ever be able to explain to me No theologian will ever expound to me fully, and no Bible scholar, no matter how great he is, will ever be able to fully explain God's love for us. Wonder tonight. Do you wonder why God should ever love this world? Through Peter's ministry tonight, when you think of what the Lord Jesus has done for us on the cross, does it not leave him, you wondering why? Why all that pain? Why all that shame? Why all that suffering? Why? Why me, Lord? Why the cross for me? Why should God set his love upon us? You ever asked yourself the question, sir? How can God love a world such as this? Let me tell you something tonight. 
It's the greatest mystery this world will never find an answer for. It's the greatest mystery this world will never be able to solve. Why God should love this world? Do you know, friend, tonight, there's nobody tonight, not one person on this planet tonight, that God doesn't love? Not one person on this planet tonight that God doesn't love. Do you know, friends, that God loves the worst person of this earth? God loves the most wickedest man on this planet. You'll never find, from the book of Genesis to the book of the Revelation, you'll never find anywhere in your Bible nor mine where God hates anybody. Did he not love Saul of Tarsus? The man whose hands was dripping with blood? Did he strike Saul of Tarsus down on the Damascus road? No, he didn't strike him down dead. He saved him. Why did he save Saul of Tarsus? It's because he loved him. Did he not love the dying thief? The man who broke the law. And yet there's a man full of crime. And yet the Lord didn't ignore his cry or his call. Ah, oh, friend, tonight. That's one mystery the world will never solve. Why God should love me. You know what God's love doesn't know tonight? There's one thing God's love doesn't know. God's love tonight doesn't know any boundaries. There's no boundaries tonight to the love of God. God's love doesn't know any limit. And you know, friend, tonight, if you're not saved in this meeting, you better believe this one great truth. God loves you. We've been brought to the cross tonight. And the cross is the greatest proof that God loves you. A friend tonight, with you, there's no excuse. God loves you. But my text tonight paints a completely different picture from God's attitude toward man, from what man's attitude is towards God. I wonder tonight, would my text be pointing to you this evening? Wonder would God be pointing to you through the words of my text tonight? What is my text? My text is Job chapter 15 and verse 25. Now listen to what Job 15 verse 25 says. It says, for he stretcheth out his hand against God and strengtheneth himself against the Almighty. Wonders at you tonight. All these years you've been stretching out your hand against God. Or I wonder is this you tonight, love? You've been strengthening yourself against the Almighty. Do you know what my text proves? It proves, first of all, man's rejection of God. For he stretcheth out his hand 
against God. Wonders at you tonight. You stretch your hand out against God. Do you know what that wee text teaches me? That wee text teaches me as to how dark man's heart is. That man would stretch his hand out against God. It shows me how wicked man's heart is that man would stretch his hand out against God. Shows me tonight how evil man's heart is when man would stretch his hand out towards God. Wonder tonight, is, is that you? Is that you tonight? All these years you've been stretching your hand out against God. You don't want God. You don't want to listen. You don't want what God has to offer. You stretch your hand out against God tonight. Do you know what all this proves? It proves tonight what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Do you know what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 3 and 4? It says this, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Now, who are the lost? The lost tonight are is every person that's outside of Christ. The lost tonight are those who have never been to the cross. The lost tonight are those who will, will not recognize themselves as sinners. The lost tonight are those who have never been to Jesus. Do you know, friend, you can, be to, you can be going to church all your life and not once have been to Jesus? You could go to church all your life and still be lost. You know, friend, I know people tonight and they wouldn't miss their place of worship, but I'll tell you their hands are stretched out against God. The God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 says, The God of this world, who's the devil, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. That's why man has his hands stretched out against God. Wonder has the devil your blind, mind blinded tonight? What people don't want to hear in these days is the truth. But what people do need to hear in these days is the truth. Because Jesus says, if ye shall know the truth, it shall be the truth that will make you free. But do you know, friend, here's the truth tonight. Every unsaved person tonight is under the power of Satan. So you see, if you're not saved tonight, that's who's controlling your mind. Satan. Do you see if you're not saved tonight? That's who's controlling your heart tonight, Satan. If you're not saved tonight, that's who's causing you to stretch out your hand against God, Satan. Has Satan got your mind tonight? Has Satan got your heart? Has Satan got your soul? Because you know, friend, that's the reality of all this this evening. Joseph Stalin was the leader of the Soviet Union for many years. Did you know J Joseph Stalin was a man who knew the gospel? And Joseph Stalin was a man who was actually preparing for the ministry. Joseph Stalin. Joseph Stalin was a man who believed in God. Joseph Stalin was a man who believed 
the gospel. Who knew the gospel. And Joseph Stalin was a man who was prepared and preparing to go into the ministry. You know what happened, Joseph Stalin? I'll tell you what happened, Joseph Stalin. Joseph Stalin, friends, allowed his heart to be turned away. Verse number 12 says, Why doth thine heart carry thee away? I know more men and I know more women who are that close and getting saved. Missions after missions, I used to shake hands with people at the door with tears streaming down their cheeks. Under the convicting power of God the Holy Ghost, trouble the world. Many a night I sat with people, counsel them in the vestries. They were that close. You know what happened to them? They allowed their heart to carry them away. That's what happened to Joseph Stalin. And Joseph Stalin went on to be the leader of the Soviet Union. And through his regime of terror, tens of millions were murdered. And tens of millions were severely injured. And this was a man who knew the gospel. And this was a man who was preparing to go into the ministry. It shows you, friend, how hard a man's heart can be. When Joseph Stalin was dying, Joseph Stalin was suffering terrible hallucinations. And just an hour before his death, he sat halfway up in bed with a clenched fist and shook his fist at God. That was his final gesture. That was his final act, shook his fist at God. What a way to end your life, shaking your fist at God. What a way to end this life, friends, with your hands stretched against God. It's an awful thing. But dear unsaved friend tonight, take you a wee look at God's hand tonight because God's hand's not stretched out against you. There's another hand God wants you to see and it's the hand of his lovely son. He didn't stretch his hand against you. He stretched his hand out for you as it was being nailed to Calvary's cross. And as his hands were being nailed to Calvary's cross, those hands that brought healing, those hands that brought blessing, nailed to an old rugged cross, that those hands tonight were never against you. And tonight, those hands, those nail-pierced hands, are stretched out toward you, not in rebellion. God's hand, His hand, is stretched out toward you, and in His hand there are written these words, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Christ stretched his hand out, not against you, dear, not against you, sir. He stretched out his hand for you, and Calvary's rugged cross. Because you see, you're lost tonight. 
And you're on the road to a lost sinner's hell. And that's where you're going as quick as the devil can take you. Tonight, I want to show you his hand. His hand tonight that was pierced. His hand tonight that is stretched out for you. That hand tonight that says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He says, I give you rest. Do you see in that text tonight, you've got man's rebellion against God. For he stretcheth. For he stretcheth. Out his hand against God. Is that you? You might be religious, dear, but you're stretching your hand out against God in rejection. All that God did for you by sending his Son to that old rugged cross. And all these years, you've been stretching your hand out against him. But do you see that text? Not only do you see tonight man's rejection of God, you see their man's rebellion against God. And he strengtheneth himself against the Almighty. Big problem today, there's no fear of God. Do you know, friend, tonight what that text teaches me? Man thinks and man believes. He can live and die whatever way he wants. Not you tonight. Job chapter 9, verse 4 says, Who hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered? Mark Ross was just a young man of 22 years of age. All through his teenage years, he mocked God. He called himself the God mocker. It's an awful way to live. But there's one thing Mark Ross learned. You don't mock God and get away with it. Mark Ross was employed by an air company, an airline company, to fly tourists over the Arctic in the in the Alaskan region. It was a job he loved. One day he was flying the plane out to somewhere in the Arctic and he realized and got a call on the radio to say that the airport was closed, he can't land. And Mark Ross looked at the fuel dial. There was another airport where he could fly to, but there wasn't going to be enough fuel. But it was impossible from the land where he was to head to. As he veered over to fly towards this other airport, he flew into a snowstorm. And in the midst of the snowstorm, all of a sudden the warning light came on, low of fuel. Do you know the first thing Mark Ross thought about? Mark Ross thought this. He says, I don't want to die at 22. Powerful how your way of thinking can change. I don't want to die at 22. He says, I don't want to die and not experience marriage. 
I don't want a day, day, he says, and not of children, not experience. You know what Mark Ross did? Mark Ross did the last thing he ever imagined to do. He prayed a silent prayer. He says, God, if you exist, bring me down. He had over 30 miles to fly. And once the warning light went on, he had only 20 miles. And he got to 15 to 20 miles. The engine started to spit and miss. And Mark Ross waited, waited for the engine to go silent and to plummet to his death. The engine kept going and kept going till the, the lights of the runway was in sight. And minutes seemed like hours. Mark Ross reached the runway. And the first thing he said, Lord, Lord, you're real. This is a miracle. Mark Ross got out of his cockpit, and the first thing he'd done, he got down on his knees on the runway. And the only thing he remembered was the hymn that his grandmother taught him when he was a child, and he used it as a prayer. You know what he prayed? There on the runway, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, Wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relief, because thy promise I believe. O Lamb of God, I come. And Mark Ross got gloriously saved on his knees on the runway. And that day, man today is in full-time service for the Lord. Now, what's God trying to say? This is what God's trying to say. You may stretch your hand against God tonight, and strengtheneth yourself against the Almighty. God will break you before he lets you go to hell because God will not let you go to hell too easily, friend, because he loves you too much. But many have rebelled. Think of Joseph Stalin tonight, a man who knew the gospel, a man tonight who was going to go into the ministry, Yet he allowed his heart to be turned away from God. You're going to allow your heart to be turned away tonight. Don't you stretch your hand out against God tonight. Reach out to him. Don't you strengthen your heart against the Almighty tonight. Get on your knees as a sinner. And seek him while he may be found. Because this night, the 9th of April, 2017, could be the night you'll cross the deadly, never to have another chance. Be wise now tonight. And seek him. Tonight he calls. Trust him tonight. You've rebelled. You've rejected long enough. Repent. Receive him. May God, by his grace, allow you to do that this evening for his name's sake. Amen. Our closing hymn tonight.